good. Ladies and gentlemen, people, okay. chapter 23, yeah. starting with the law of charges. Please remind me. Lohit, what is the law of charges? Um, I think it was force dudes, uh electricity equals K, Q1, Q2, that is not the law of charges, but I will write it down on the board regardless, which is KQ1, Q2 over R squared, which is the electric force, or sometimes referred to as the Coulomb force, or Coulomb's force, because it is Coulomb's law. You should be aware that is one of the names of the various equations that does come up every once in a while on the AP test, so that is Coulomb's law. In that equation class, R is not it is of the two charge. <laughs> this is especially confusing because R sometimes is. Okay. We still haven't figured out the law of charges. Like charges repel, unlike charges attract. We have the equation for to, that shows the quantization, quantization of charge. Emily, what is the equation that shows the quantization of charge? Q equals n. Q, the charge on any object is equal to n times e. Q is the charge on any object. What are n and e? That is an integer. That is an integer. called a fundamental charge, a charge on an electron or a proton, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, and positive or negative. Which brings us to one of the things we're going to add to our table of friends, which is charge. The symbol for which is a lowercase q or an uppercase q. In general, what have we identified as the difference between a lowercase q and an uppercase q? Nitish. The lowercase q is like a point charge. A point charge, uppercase? Or like uniform. Uh, like a charge like distribution, right? So it's a, on something that is not a point charge. In general, that's the case. Although on the free response question that you just turned in, that was not the case. The dimensions for charge are, of course, Coulomb C for Coulomb. And you should be aware that Coulombs are not a base SI dimension. Again, they are not base SI. And Q is equal to N times we have the equation for the electric force of attraction and repulsion between any two charged objects. Give me an equation for the, um, we'll do it this way, we'll start over here. We'll do the electric field. The symbol for an electric field, of course, is a capital E. What are the dimensions for an electric field, Hillary? Um, Newtons per Coulomb. Newtons per Coulomb. Equations we're going to have for electric field. Eric, match. Um, is it E equal force electric over Q? Q. This is one of the equations. This is the most generic, this is the definition of the electric field. I'm also going to put another equation for the electric field up here. What equation is that? Close. R squared. KQ over R squared. This is the electric field for what, Sierra? This one is for a point charge. And this is the definition of an electric field. So this is the electric field that exists around a point charge. Okay, but what if we have a uniform charge distribution? <laughs> In other words, a charge that has some sort of shape. It's not a point charge. How are we going to figure out the electric field then? Dorsted? We 
do have to do an integral. So what equation are we going to use? Five. Um, but I need I need the the whole equation with the integral here. Potter. Use Gauss's law first. Ah, that's uh, one way of doing it. But we're we're not quite to Gauss's law yet. We can actually use this basic equation to figure out the electric field for some uniform charge distributions. What did we do in that case? We found out the electric field, for example, from a small distance from a charged rod. We're going to start with this, dE equals uh, k times dQ over r squared. And you can take the integral of both sides to figure out the electric field. So don't forget that one. In order to use that, or I guess for various items, we're going to figure out the three. We need to have the three um, charge densities. Bill, give me all three charge densities. Um, like the P. The P, what's the, what is that symbol? Uh, that's okay. Loki's got it. What's the third one? Say it. Rho. Rho. Uh, it's Q, o, Q over V, and it's, it's like volumetric. Volumetric? Charge. That's it. Good volumetric charge. That's it. Keep going. Uh, like the O with the line on top. <laughs> the O with the line on top? Okay. Don't worry. Loki, what's the name of that one? Lowercase sigma. It's a lowercase sigma? Good. That's equal to? Uh, Q over A. Which is called? Surface. Uh -huh. And then the lambda. The lambda. Is equal to Q over L. Q over L. Loki, what is lambda then? No, it's not linear charge density. Remember, we have those three. Ah, ah. Dorstetter. What symbol is that? Right, what symbol is it? <laughs> what is the name of that symbol? The I with a circle in the middle of it. Miller. Capital P. I don't know any of those. I'm sorry to hear that. We have the electric flux. Thanks. Electric flux. The symbol, of course, being the capital P with a lowercase. Or I'm sorry, with an uppercase E subscript. What are the dimensions? On electric flux. Um, <laughs> hang on. How about let's do this? Give me the equation for electric flux type. Okay. It's the surface inner area integral whatever of P dot V A or U in over E naught. That is Gauss's law. True. But we also have, we can figure out the electric flux through a single surface, and that would just be E A times the cosine of theta, or the dot product of E and A. Therefore, Tyler, what are the dimensions for the electric flux? That's my question. True. Hang on. Hmm. I don't know. I, sorry, this is the idea here was to help you. Oh. Right? So um, it would be Newton meters squared over coulombs. The electric field, that electric field newtons per coulomb multiplied by the area in meters squared. So Newton meters squared per coulomb, okay. the electric flux. All right, so we have Gauss's <coughs> law. Uh -uh. Whenever we use Gauss's law, Mr. P, <laughs> what should we do? Whenever you use Gauss's law, you should draw out your Gaussian surface. Please remember, you have to draw that Gaussian surface. Um, whenever you draw, oh, actually, Q, let's identify this first, Q in. That Q in is the charge inside what? Um, that's the charge inside the Gaussian surface. This area right here is the area of what? What? Or I'm sorry, I guess I'll say the surface area just to make sure. Surface. 
area of what? Of the object. This is not the surface area of the object, which is why I'm pointing it out. This is the surface area of what condition? The Gaussian surface. The Gaussian surface. Whenever you pick the shape of your Gaussian surface, you are always going to pick your shape of your Gaussian surface such that what is true. John. Um, um, this is key. We got to like to figure out the shape of the Gaussian surface. You need to. You're always picking it such that several things are true. So, um, the area vector has to be either parallel or perpendicular to the flux. Okay. The area vector is either parallel or perpendicular to what? The flux field lines. The uh, electric flux field lines. The electric flux field lines is confusing things. You're using too many terms in there. Electric flux lines. Right, again, you're still using too many terms. Somebody fix it for me, Zach. Just the electric field lines, right? There's no flux in there. So these are the two, the electric field lines. So one is that the area vector is either parallel or perpendicular to the electric field lines. What is the other thing whenever you're picking the shape of the Gaussian surface? Traps. Who's got it for me? There's one other thing. Think about all the things that you do on the left-hand side of this equation. Jenkins. The electric field has to be constant on the Gaussian The electric field must be constant on the Gaussian surface such that you can take it out from underneath the interval. This one is so you have either the cosine of zero or cosine of nine. Uh, we did a whole bunch of examples of using Gauss's law. Here are uh, ones that you have to be able to do. So here are examples of using Gauss's law to figure out the electric field. We figured out the electric field uh, inside and outside of a sphere, and we did both a conductor and an insulator. We did inside and outside of a shell. We did near a an infinitely long wire of charge. We did an infinitely large plate of charge, and we did two infinitely large parallel plates. Those are all ones that you are responsible for knowing how to use Gauss's law um, to figure out the electric field. Don't forget conductors in electrostatic equilibrium. There are four things you need to remember about conductors in electrostatic equilibrium. I'm not going to go through them right now. You have them in your notes. Yes, Meg? Oh, I, was, I didn't read one of the words. You got it? Yeah. Okay. So we have those. Oh, and one last thing. Please remember that um, outside a sphere of uniform charge, It acts like a point chart particle. And therefore, the electric field is going to be equal to K times Q divided by R squared, where Q is the charge inside that sphere. You could simply state that fact if you are not asked to prove it. If you are asked to prove it, of course, going to have to use Gauss's law to do so, but if you are not asked to prove that, you can simply say that because it is a uniform, a sphere of uniform charge, it acts like a point charge.